This tutorial is for someone I know named Elfin Light on Toy House, also known as Incel Core, in me and Spook666 Discord server. She asked for paint 3D tutorials in the Toy House forums, and I am going to deliver that today. Here's an example of my first successful paint 3D model I did, but today we are going to make some new ones. So you open up paint 3D and click on new. If you're used to any basic drawing software, it should be pretty self-explanatory about the brushes and whatnot on the side. These will be important later. Head to these three dots next to this slider and click on canvas options. That what you want to do is turn on transparent canvas. My goofy I forgot but make sure to turn off show canvas also. Otherwise if you forget, your final render will look like this. Now that you've settled that, you can start on making your 3D model. It's optional to do this but not required, but I like to make a gesture or sketch before making the actual 3D shapes of the model. I realize they give you this default width and height, so I'm gonna change it. If you need to move your sketch around, you can press select and then you can move it around. Paint 3D is like most drawing programs. Like for example, most drawing programs will allow you to press Control plus Z to undo. So if you need to do that in here, it will do the same thing basically. Now here's the character I'm drawing right here in the top right corner. My favorite Discord mod ever. Guy is named Era. You first want to determine what shapes you will be creating for the models and details that will require you to draw onto the shapes. For instance, his head shape will be drawn out with this specific tool, but the face such as the eyes and whatnot will be drawn with pencils and other brushes. Right here. It's something that becomes trial and error sometimes in the process, but don't worry overall. You don't always have to use the 3D shape tools to create like basically everything in the model. I don't always fret about color picking first. Sometimes it might actually help in the first place to make the color off palette like a blue or red. To change the color of the head, what you gotta do is you gotta press on the shape and then you gotta edit color. You can um, press here to like select a custom color and then press OK and it should change. Now with this information in mind, I need to teach you about these four rotating tools. Okay, since I horribly explained the last time, I will explain it again using this blue spear. So for Z-axis, you can basically turn it around like this. So basically for the X-axis, you can basically move it back and forth, kind of like vertically, like this. For Y-axis, you can turn it around horizontally. And for the Z-axis position, you can move it on the Z-axis and it lets you position where you'd want. This is perfect for if you're trying to align the head and neck and body and stuff like that. It's going to be a lot of trial and error and messing with all of these four, but these are your four keys to making sure everything is aligned. So what you do is you can click on any of these to decorate. You can like basically experiment with which ones you'd like. You could zoom in so you can get more precision, but I will use the uh, marker tool for now. And this is really helpful for like adding textures and whatnot. Especially for like detailing the hair or what I'm about to do is uh, Ira wears a beanie, like a Parappa beanie. So I'd have to add that detail in the middle of his beanie using these tools. But for now I'm going to draw on the eyes. Okay, I forgot, but make sure you change the colors and then just draw it on. Now that I've constructed the face, I'm going to move on to all of the hair. You should see these directions are pretty self-explanatory, but if you're still unsure, I'd recommend just giving it a little trial and error to see what directions aid you in the right direction. If it doesn't work out, you can always just do Ctrl plus Z to undo a mistake. But yeah, pretty much what I've done for the hair and the face, I will just continue to do for the rest of the model. And now the model's done. You want to double check everything's the way you want it, you can press select right here. There are two ways to do this. Basically do this, or you can click on one of the 3D model parts, and then you can press select all, and it'll do that. And you just give it a little turn around, and there you have it. Now what you want to do in order to save this as a GIF, you gotta go to model, save as, you gotta go to video. Now, you have the options to save as a MP4, but to save it as a GIF, you actually have to manually do it as a gift. Now if everything's okay, you're gonna adjust the size of everything and click the animation mode that you want. Turntable and Emerge are my two personal favorites. You can adjust the speed multiplier here. 
Now, you can also adjust the angle and the framing as you wish. I like to personally do a 1-1. One, one. In order to get it more adjusted to the center, what you might want to do is... You actually gotta manually do that in here. Just gotta move it towards the center a bit more. And once you've adjusted it more to the center, you can zoom in and whatnot to make it more framed a little better. These are basically my finished products. What I like to do with the final is I like to edit a background with it. Cause just having it be a model with a transparent background just feels kind of boring to me. So I like to add versions with a spice to it. Also another cool thing about Paint 3D is that if you're too lazy to download or figure out 3D programs like Blender, this silly little program that comes with your Windows 10 can also open up 3D models that you can download from sites like Sketchfab and such. I took this grenade launcher from Sketch Fab, for example, you could pop it in Paint 3D if you want to use it for reference and angle it right and all that. Shout out to Foul XXX on Sketch Fab. I will provide a link to this specific model in the description. Now, if this seems like a ton to you, I can provide another option that's also available on mobile and iPad instead of just PC exclusive. So what you can do is you can also open up Ibis or Ibis Paint X and use the relief filter to make shapes so look 3D. You can't really turn these around or have them be literally Literally 3D like in Paint 3D. If you're just looking to make illustrations and not models you can turn around, this is a good alternative I'd say. Now, if you need any more further help, I have a Discord server dedicated to artists that you can join. I'll put it in the description. If you need any further guidance, you can reach out to me there and I'll try my best to answer. I'm sure maybe other people can help out too if they know about this program also. I hope this tutorial was able to help you, Kristen, and anyone else who watched through this whole thing. I've also got other social medias like Twitter and, and Instagram, so if you want to tag me in your results if I was able to help you, I would love to see it. I have a couple social medias in my card if you'd like to check that out in the description. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.